Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Rad Life. Um, in keeping with the track that we've been on for the last couple of episodes, um, we're looking at what happens and what do we do in different ways after COVID-19. And one of the things that some of you know that I'm involved in is the spa and wellness industry. And obviously, this is a health-related crisis that we're going through right now. So I wanted to basically reach out to somebody who is very involved in the um, equipment side of it, Jessica Wadley, who's a friend, works for Oakworks, which is a major manufacturer and supplier for massage tables, hospital ta uh, beds uh, for uh, both wellness and healthcare, and they have multiple divisions. And I wanted to see what she's seeing out there because we're starting to talk about reopening. We're talking about what do we do, uh, how do we prepare for it? Are there new realities that we're having to deal with? And of course, not only is it how we deal with it from a labor and an operations perspective, but from an equipment for a training, from a training, from a support capacity, what is it that we're looking at? Because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of these things that have to be addressed by businesses, spas, wellness centers, hair salons. Um, you know, we're all, we all need a haircut kind of thing, but like I mean, there are certain things that are beyond with the normal sanitization and sterilization that we have done in the past. So without further ado, I am going to bring in Jessica here. She is probably in the waiting room. Let's see if Jessica is with us. Jessica, are you there? Jessica. Oh, there's I'm Jessica. There. Wow. Nice background. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I thought I thought I thought you were sequestered. It looks like you're a spa. <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, recapture that energy that I miss so much of being inside of spa rooms. So how, first and foremost, how are you doing? Everything okay? You're safe? You're safe, healthy. Yeah. I'm in Carlsbad, California. Good. Um, I live right on hole five of the Omni golf course. And right when um, all the quarantine started happening, yeah, we were inside of our house. We had rain, which as you know, in SoCal, we never have rain. And then the golf course opened up. So we were able to walk the golf course every single day, mm -hmm. which has been lovely. Mm -hmm. And then last week, police are now touring the golf course. Police, Carlsbad police, not La Costa security. Our Carlsbad police, and they're handing out a $1,000 citation. So other than being truly stuck in the house, mm -hmm. doing good. Well, you know, that's interesting because when I, before I brought you on, I was talking about how, you know, it's like, we're now switching into sort of post COVID mindset on everything. I mean, I, I, the governor supposedly coming out today with a s announcement about closing the beaches up again, because it just people just kind of going to the beaches last week were, you know, in some areas were not practicing social distancing. They were not practicing kind of sort of some of the guidelines that were set out and there are people that are like, okay, listen, I've been sequestered too long. I, I, I don't care. I need to get out. This is kind of interesting that what you're saying, which is that on a private piece of property, basically, you got the city police monitoring and, and, and citing people. That's crazy. It was crazy. And, and now, so I live about 1.5 miles to Locadia. Yeah, You can't really walk up and down the boardwalk either because it's the same thing. So where do you go? You really can only go to the grocery store. Um, but yeah, to get the police on a private priest piece of property on scooters. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 really, that's really unusual. I mean, I can, I can understand it on a state beach. I can even yeah. understand it on a city beach. Yeah. But on a private piece of property, especially golf courses, it's a it's really different kind of city to city. I mean, I, I happen to both, ironically, I, you know, I... I, I and I guess I, we we finally realized that I'm essential services with the you know the podcast mm. is essential services, which I still like kind of giggle when I say that. Like I don't understand why podcasts should be essential services, but I'll take it. And then construction is essential services. So I've been I have not really been, you know, sequestered the same way. I've I've made, minimized my interaction going outside, going to job sites. I've gone to job sites for inspections and things like that. That we. Some cities are doing a Costa Mesa does their inspections by camera now by video phone. Yeah. Um, but it really city by city. I was, I was out a couple of days ago and literally there was like a foursome walking across, uh, uh, I think it was Irvine Boulevard in Newport beach, Costa Mesa area, going to the pitch and putt 
and there was no distancing between them. They, everybody was pulling their own bag. And, you know, here you are, you're talking about Carlsbad and you're getting ticketed on, on a private golf course, basically, that's on a resort property. Even I mean, it's like, you'd have to, you, you, I would think under normal circumstances, the police wouldn't show up unless somebody calls them from the management company. So that's kind of really wild. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I mean, obviously, the management company, I'm sure, was, you know, a catalyst for that. And then uh, these are all residents around here, too. It wasn't like people were coming in off right. the street. I mean, you, you, have, you have to be a resident to have an access. So. Wow. So, yeah. okay, so, so with that kind of craziness going on, um, and with, you know, our industry having been sort of in the spotlight the last couple of days because, you know, like the state of Georgia is talking about, opening up hair salons and spas and gyms and fitness places. And, you know, the, the statements that are coming out, at least in the state of Georgia, are also including the cosmetology board and, you know, guidelines. And I looked at some of those guidelines because I'm trying to stay on, on top of it, regardless where is open, because I figured there's going to be some continuity with people following suit. And here's some of the things that are in Georgia, but we're going to see them maybe happening in Orange County. We'll see them in San Diego County, um, San Diego County put out their own guidelines. I think this week, starting like May 1st, you got like major guidelines coming in. So it's really kind of not, it's not easy. I mean, I looked at those guidelines and I'm like, yeah, capacity, you're not going to be able to operate on your full capacity. Yeah. You know, these businesses are, don't have major margins. No. They're going to have to incur costs and modifications of everything from the space itself to equipment to cleaning procedures to operational. I mean, you know, if you if you're a non-essential person in the operation of the business in terms of touch points or proximity to deliver service, you are now supposed to be remotely, commu you know, working. So that changes the whole dynamics of how I have to set up my business. I can't. Not everybody's under the same roof, right? Uh, sanitation stations for each person, keeping distance, you know, safe distances between both uh, staff and employees and employees and employees. So what are you seeing from your side as far as the vendor side of things, both in terms of people maybe seeking you out or looking for support and clarification? Because that's the other sort of unspoken truth about this. And that is that there's a lot of confusion. There's not a, really a clear message of what to do, when you are going to be able to do it. What are you hearing from your side? Because I know you're really involved and you got a lot of people that reach out to you. Definitely. I mean, we service large accounts and have huge contracts nationally and globally. And so every day, I mean, every single day it's changing as we know. Um, last week was a big week because we heard from some of the spa sectors and some of the national chains mm -hmm. that some states were opening. Well, that caused a flood of phone calls, a flood, and they wanted answers. Okay. What do we do? What do we do with our equipment? How can we shift? Um, and so it was so much of, of flooded answers and Oakworks is such a great brand that they know yep. that we have the healthcare background. They were calling us for answers. Well, that compelled me to just shoot a video on a Sunday because I we literally couldn't handle all of the questions. Mm -hmm. And that video went viral like that. I, yep. I was expecting to get it to get 30 views or what what have you, but I think the key here is that people really want answers, mm -hmm. real answers. What do we do? Um, and it varies state by state, like you said, mm -hmm. but, and we're going to see a lot of waves of this mm -hmm. until nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody has all the answers, but we're going to, as vendors, we need to be prepared because it's, it's, you know, one minute, this state is opening. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's get prepared. Let's make sure we have all the, uh, the protocols set in place. What are those protocols? There's a lot of confusion. Like you said, there's a lot of resources. Um, and then you know, what happens if we, if like, for example, in California, as you know, our governor yesterday then shut down all the beaches. What right. happens if it does get shut back down again? Or what happens right. if there's a second wave? So these are, these are a lot of complex topics, I know. But um, I think it's so important to be well-armed right now. And mm -hmm. with us really having a healthcare background that we have since 2008, we made a strategic decision in 2008 at the last downturn, because we started in massage and spa and we're privately held, we made that strategic decision in 2008 to become a medical company and a true medical company where 
we work with hospitals worldwide and work with GE and work with Philips and work with key contracts um, and we're, we're regulated by the FDA. So I think that right now for us, that has been so well received um, to really take that true healthcare knowledge and transfer it over. Our spa has always had the right intent. Our spa industry has always had the right intention when it comes to sanitization. Right. Each state governs, really state board is governed around sanitization and, and we understand that. But I still think that there's a lot for us to learn from a spa industry side, from the healthcare side. There's, there's so much that we're going to have to adapt. Yeah, to yeah I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I think, I think also, and this is not picking on the spa industry per se, but it's, I think every yeah. industry that has regulations, uh, the regulations are both written and executed from my, uh, from my uh, experience as minimums, like even ADA compliancy requirements. Like we don't design to universal design, which has a, actually a competitive advantage and a, and a sellability factor to uniquely differentiate a business from another. If you are able to support everybody, regardless of age or limitations, you just opened up a whole sector to the, of the market that maybe somebody who is basically only dealing with minimum. So, so you know, we, we, we design ADA compliant. We don't design universally. Mm -hmm. We don't do multi-generational. We just do, you know, limited ability and minimally address that. The, the sanitation, it's like, here's the minimum hygienic thing that we do. Right. Yeah. Well, it's an interesting reality right now, I think, and it's going to become more and more from my, from what I'm thinking is going to happen is that that's not going to be enough. Like you're going to have to go above the minimum because there's another factor going on here. And, you know, everybody's rushing to open their businesses, especially like in this, in, in this field where it's literally touch points. I mean, we are hands on, I mean, literally hands on. Right, so the, so proximity of six feet. You tell me how somebody is going to basically do a, anything from a facial to a hair a hairstyling to a massage. Oh yeah, you know I mean you know I'm reminded. I don't know if you saw the episode. Did you see the episode of Saturday Night Live, uh, uh, The Sands of Modesto? Modesto? No. Okay, you need to go see that. It's, okay. It's, okay, it's with with it's with um, Daniel Craig, but it's really funny because he's sitting there at the, on the sofa, and you see the woman that's on the sofa, and it's like, oh, they're having a different moment. And he's like, oh. I remember stroking your hair and you see the hand stroking her, but the hand is like a long hand and a stick, yeah. right? And it's a six yeah. foot sofa. So, so, I mean, we can't do that in this industry. This industry is very much hands-on. Yeah. So the minimums are a, I, as a consumer, if all I, you're doing is the minimums, are you going to bring me in the door? Right. I don't right. think you're going to. I mean, I might have some psychological block for the next six months about the fact that I really don't feel safe out there. And you can try to shame me or try to basically tell me, no, 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 you have no reason to feel that way. But guess what? I do. So cu customers always right, right? So what are you going to do beyond the minimums that are outlined by the state? What are you going to tell me? No, no, you need to come in here because we are meeting the gu minimum guidelines of the state. Thank you very much. It's my money. I don't want to spend it there. I'll go to the guy down the street who basically put in a new air filtration system and we'll put in all this stuff. That being said, there's a lot of cost that's going to be involved in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there so, is going to be a lot of cost. Right? And, and there's a lot of risk management to be held and there's a lot of potential liability. Potential liability is yeah. another factor, especially, mm -hmm. you know, with proximity, it just increases the possibility for somebody to, you know, be, you know, uh, uh, frivolous lawsuits i mean we are in a very litigious society you yes. know it, 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 restaurants have to and, and again tell me i, I want to hear what you were hearing from your from your guys but i'm looking at restaurants that are saying and literally there are pictures already out restaurants that are saying okay every other table is going to have to be basically out of service because i have to provide six foot separation well i don't know anybody other than like i, I think spas are actually in an ironic way protected because a room is a room there's a separation component right yeah. so you have to deal with just the separation between the person who's providing the service and the person receiving it and that gets a little bit more manageable but if you're a hair salon that means that every other station basically has now been taken out of service if yeah. you are a manicure pedicure nail place that every other throne has now just been taken out of service right every manicure other manicure tables have now been taken out of service 
you know, your POS station now has to be touchless. You're, you know, um, how, how, how are, are, are people, are people aware of this? Are the questions that you're hearing, are they, are they in that space right now or are they not yet aware of that? I think it's just starting to break right now. Um, iSpod just posted today some consumer uh, feedback and some consumer snapshots. And all of this, the data shows that consumers want to come back to SPA right away. And there's many different levels, right? Um, because they're, they're gonna wanna come back for their massages. They're gonna wanna come back for their facials. And maybe 25% of the population does not. They have a lot of fear, but 40% of the population does. That's pretty good in the first phase yeah. of this, right? Now, what they're saying though, is they don't wanna gather in common areas. So yes, we're starting to hear that in spa, which is going to be really interesting for you with your design firm. Well, how do you, yeah, how, how do you, how do you, I mean, absolutely. I'm looking at it as an opportunity it, because you're going to have to reconfigure your spaces. I mean, yes. we, we, we forget about spas, anybody in a commercial, in a commercial brick and mortar, the premise is maximize square footage, maximize real estate, maximize revenue generation. Absolutely. Somebody just took 50% of that revenue generation and threw it out the window because you have to comply with guidelines. And even if those guidelines go away, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm predicting everything from face masks to anything else. You pretty much are going to live with that reality at the very least until next spring. And I'll tell you why, because yeah. this summer, Schools are going to be closed. Nobody's going back to school. Everybody's going to still be at home. There's going to be that concern about safety. Uh, people are going to still not have clear messaging. We're coming into an election in, in November. That's going to add to the confusion. Everybody's going to leverage this thing one way or the other, fortunately or unfortunately. And here goes summer. Now comes fall. Now we're concerned about the next flu season and next, next time when we may have some, you know, the normal stuff that happens. We're still wearing face masks, you know. We're still we're still cleaning and wiping countertops like like they're going oh, out yeah. of style, right? Yeah. Then the next spring comes by, and maybe maybe if we haven't had another spike, we haven't had another fear, you know, something that scares us. By next spring, we may come out of this. So that's six months of business. I mean, with the yeah. margins being what they are, with the need for you to retrofit and basically now incur additional costs. And at the very best, be operating at 50% capacity. Even the most strategic business is going to be super challenged to stay in business. A hundred percent. I mean, we know that it's always been about, like you said, maximizing that square footage space, making sure utilization was always, you know, a, a landmark or 80%. We see all that cut in half. And those are, those are benchmarks usually designed, you know, to yield 10 and 15% profitability okay. <laughs> within a spa space. So they're going to, absolutely. It, I mean, we're thinking about that with design. We're thinking about that with the equipment that we're producing. We're thinking about another layer of safety there. Um, you know, and there's another deeper layer to this, even though, and here, I hear a lot of language and it's the right language mm -hmm. about really bringing cleanliness to the forefront and making sure that it's instead of it, it being buried behind the scenes now we're going to make sure that it's brought to the forefront you know in the right way but there's a whole other list of things i think that aren't being talked about for example stones hot stones salt stones i know a lot of people talk about um, them being antimicrobial themselves mm -hmm. but would that fly in a hospital mm -hmm. is the question mm -hmm. and if you're going to have those treatments if you need a UV light to disinfect them, how, how is that going to affect turning over of the room? And if we need to adopt some of this equipment, how are, is that going to be incorporated into the room where it still feels tranquil? You know, again, back to your design. Um, salt quartz tables. You cannot sanitize every single salt quartz. How are you, you going to do that? No, a lot, of, a lot of the stuff that we have been basically putting out as quote unquote innovation is going to be challenged because. Yes that required, I mean, there's a little bit of a higher risk factor or it's the way it's applied yeah. is that, you know, here's the irony, here's the irony of, of the, sort of the space we are in, just societally and, and then, you know, it permeates and comes down and hits every single thing that we do. If you look back at the history of how public bathrooms were designed or how, how public bathrooms today. Okay, Rod, only you would know this. Let me just tell you. But I'm listening. <laughs> okay. 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 
do, do you know that the way we design bathrooms really stems, okay, from the fact that we had to deal with infectious diseases? Okay, makes sense. Okay. Surfaces that we use today, formica, you know, synthetic surfaces, corian, all that stuff, right? It originated in hospitals and places of that nature as a basic material. It then took on a layer of, you know, like aesthetic. It took on a layer of options and color and all this stuff. But the, a lot of like the separations in the toilets, the way that things are, the, the wipeability of wainscots. All, 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 and there is, for those who are interested, contact me and I'll, I'll pass you on a, uh, a blog that actually talked about this. But where we are today, if you look back at the progression and the path that certain things took in terms of evolution, where we are today is going to lead to a lot of that. And it's going to lead to a lot of that that are going to be opportunities for companies that don't even exist today. There's going to yeah. be opportunities for companies that exist today that are pivoting. I mean, you guys pivoted last last downturn and turned in yourselves into medical products. I even remember your logo has now changed since the one that was up there first, right? And rattled yeah. into the medical side of things. Um, and I think it's 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 going to be interesting to see because from doing these shows, and I was I, I took it from doing it once a week to doing it almost once a day. There's wow. two there's two mindsets. It really comes down to two mindsets. Either you are a growth mindset mm. or you are a bunker mentality. Mm. Yeah. And a lot of the stuff that's being thrown around, and again, I am not going to pick on an industry, but I am seeing it yeah. also happen in this industry. A lot of the stuff that's being thrown around as if it is the, you know, the answer to us coming out of this is just repetitive material that we have put out, maybe tweaked slightly. Yeah, I think it's going to take a heck of a lot more than that to answer and address the concerns of those businesses, to provide them with things that are genuinely, genuinely not surface, not eight by 10 glossy, thin mm -hmm. as paper, but genuinely substantially meaningful because we're going to have to convince people to come back into our businesses yeah, and literally expose themselves to the environment. I mean, yeah, if I, you know, you, we, you know, I'm seeing it with hotels too. We're, we're, we're doing, we're, we're, we're implementing cleaning procedures. We're implementing heightened cleansing procedures. Well, my first question to you is, why weren't you doing it to begin with? Mm -hmm. And second, and secondly, great, terrific. What else are you doing? Because that's an assumption. It's like me going to a restaurant and saying, you know what, their food is really good. Their service is really good. Yeah, that's 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 a given. What mm -hmm. else are we gonna do? Right. Well, we weren't we weren't doing it, and again, we 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 always had the right intention. I think that's important to say. We yeah, right yeah, intention. absolutely. People had and the right strive, intention, and we strive to meet basic standards. We didn't do it even further because there wasn't a pandemic, right? And mm -hmm. infectious diseases that were we were a place of of tranquility and luxury where you don't want to be thinking about that. Mm -hmm. Um, however, that's going to have to change now. It is a new era. You know, uh, even looking at things like hospital, when you go into a medical treatment room or a hospital treatment room, everything comes in single packs yep. and you don't touch it and you don't reuse it again. What about, again, that's why I bring up things like stones, because if mm -hmm. you're going to use them, my gosh, you have to have a system to be able to, to, to be able to sanitize that. And yep. how does that affect your treatment room turnover? Number one. Number two, you know, you've gone are the days of gallon product, even that you can dispense. And we're, this, this is the yep. additional layer that keeps me up at night. And I'm an equipment manufacturer. <laughs> I work for a equipment manufacturer. But, you know, those kind of, because spas didn't have to go to that level because there wasn't a pandemic. But we got to start talking about it now because those single use packs, when you go in there, you tear them open, they get tossed. And then, then, there, then there's going to be the, the whole other, you know, after, and I don't think, I shouldn't say after, because this is, this is here to stay. It's now, yeah. It's here, it's now, but, but, then, but then I know there'll be another wave of discussion of if we have single use packs, how's that going to affect sustainability and the planet, but human health first right now. Yeah. So there's a whole lot we have to think about in design. There's a whole lot we have to think about in materials. 
you know, we've always had these medical grade certifications. I think the reason why that video went viral mm -hmm. is because it was proven science that's based upon healthcare and foundation and valid certifications. I know it's the same thing in design. But I think I think that's and I think that's what people are going to be looking for. Yes. They're going to they're going to look for it not because they're geeking out. They're going to be looking for it because they need to hold on to something as being substantial, you know, um, sort of sort of deductive reasoning, connecting the dots. I can see why this is what it, they are saying it is, you know, just just, you know, pretty words and nice smells and stuff like that isn't going to be sufficient to yeah. basically draw that thing. And, and, and there's another layer to this that I don't think anybody's really talking about. We have over 16 million people that are unemployed. Mm. So yes, there is a, there's a plethora of really, I mean, there's, there's a positive side of that. If you, you want to think beyond just the immediacy, you have a lot of qualified people that are in, 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 in the, in the employment pool, right, right now. Mm -hmm. that we were actually having shortages in certain cases. So the, the person who is looking for work, if that job is there, they're kind of in a little bit of in the driver's seat because, because they may bring a skill set to that company that that company can, couldn't get, they couldn't get that person before. Now they're out there. And, and, and I'm talking about the sure. caliber of people that have been laid off or furloughed. I mean, if those companies didn't treat them well in the way they laid them off and furloughed, they're not going to go back to those companies. I mean, that's gonna that's that's been talked about over and over and over the last couple of weeks. And so that's a positive. However, the other side of it, which is the immediacy, because we are in a discretionary spending industry. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is is these people are not working. Yeah. Like, you know, 16, per, 16 million people in the United States are not working. So how many of those people actually were spending that money? Maybe, I don't know, once every two weeks for that manicure or pedicure you know, that haircut every, every, every other week. And now it's going to basically be extended to once every four weeks. Now that cut that volume in half, you know, it's, it's going to be an interesting reality. I don't think you're going to be able to pitch everything from the typical marketing, branding, positioning, reaching out mm -hmm. and, and, and business development. Mm -hmm. um, what your environments are, look, are going to look like is going to be challenging. What are some of the things that you have heard with now that we're talking about reopening? that yeah. seem to be repetitive, like concerns or things that you want to share? Concerns from the consumer standpoint? Yeah, or, or from the business owner. I mean, I think every, both of those are valid. Well, I think that essential services, and I'm, I'm going to use that word and reiterate what that means, because that word's being used a lot. But I think that I'm hearing that even though, you know, you have a mixed bag, people are saying it's going to be all about high technology treatments. Um, and then you have the purists who say, it's all about human touch. I think to your point, if, you know, we have 30 million people without job, we, we need to face the fact that some of those discretionary dollars are not going to first and foremost go towards high tech treatments where you're plugged in somewhere and left alone. No. No. <laughs> We've no. been plugged in. I'm plugged in every single day looking at the screen, you know, and, and, and then second to that, how scientifically proven, again, back with our healthcare space, we have to be careful what we claim. We're regulated by the FDA. Yeah. So as a spa industry, our awareness needs to be raised and make sure that these things are not just fluff and fold from various things. So that's my first point. I think people are going to crave high touch. And I think 40% of that population will go back immediately. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean about essential, because when you touch me, mm -hmm. when you are working on my various body issues, that's an immediate result. Yeah. As a woman and as a female, my nails, number one, <laughs> you know, beauty, beauty services, those things you can see men, same thing. So I, I, that's what I'm hearing. I think that those things will come back. I think there might be a waiting list for those things. Mm -hmm. Well, especially if you can't accommodate everybody in the same space, because you're now limited to 50%. So if you're a smart company you're building an amazing booking system right now yes you're pivoting you're pivoting and doing something of a of a membership program or a vip accessibility thing and you're offering it at a very reasonable price entry point right now because you are trying to secure your business if you're smart you're pivoting if you're not smart right now if you're thinking you're going to open your doors yeah. and operate like you did the last day before you shut them 
Yes. You are in danger of being extinct, honestly. Yes. Yes. I think there'll be some extinction for sure. There's just going to be just when you when you pan out the, the when you pencil out the economics and you look at some of the real estate, if you don't pivot, right. there's going to be some extinction. And I say this with um, I say this from a place of we have the time to think on it now and be creative now, but we got to do it now. <laughs> and 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 that that's what I've said on a couple of shows. I said, you know, if you want to really look at the at, at the COVID nineteen, if you, look, you want to look at this as a crisis and you want to look at what it is that we may have gotten out of it, I think we were gifted two things. We were gifted the gift of time hmm. and the slowdown long enough for the, you know, the quietness. And like we, 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 and I said it in one of the episodes, I said, the spy industry, we used to sell silence. Yeah. Literally like Jeremy McCarthy. They, I remember him writing about like they, they sold silence yeah. at, okay, at Mandarin. All right. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, okay, I, I, you know, at first glance, it's like the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And then when you think about it is the world is so noisy and so moving fast and so filled with crap. And it's like, we, like the only way we could measure our, our, our value was how much we could actually put on our calendars. And all of a sudden it went stop. Yeah. And then when that happened, if you're really smart, you're realizing that you actually not only had the time to think, but it was quiet enough that you could hear yourself thinking and strategically maybe come up with something. Yes. Yeah. Right. I mean, and, 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 yeah. and maybe the value system of what we value has changed during this period and, and how we spend our money and what we put value in. I mean, you know, it used to be like, you know, you'd ask somebody, uh, and for people who watch this show, they've heard me say this before, but they, you know, you used to say, well, what do you do? And what do you drive? Well, right now, I don't, if you're working at anything, I hooray for you because there's 30 million people or whatever the number is yeah. today, you know, that's moving so fast. It's like higher, you know, it's, it fluctuates higher than the, the stock market going and it's only going up, you know, unemployed. And what do you drive? I don't care. You're supposed to be sequestered and staying at home. It doesn't really matter what you drive. Right. So, no. so how, how I, how I measure my status or how I measure my value during this period has changed. And it wasn't like something we went over a weekend. This has been almost two months now. Yeah. So I so. think that's the number one Jeremy McCarthy also said, shout out to Jeremy. Um, yeah, but I he, sh shout out to Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> he also said in one of his articles that, um, you know, we've been faced with our own mortality and I'm, I'm going to switch away for that. But what we've also faced is that material things don't matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. Um, and I've always loved material things and loved different things. I mean, um, but it, it just doesn't matter. And every single human being on this planet has been faced with that. That is, that is the other thing that's, that's really different. Like not one person out there has not been touched by this. Yeah. Not one. Like and if you, if, if um, the only people that have been spared are people that are basically too young to maybe remember it. Right. But I mean, every any, any, any kid that's going to be graduating high school this year, yeah. touched by it. Yeah. Everybody moving from middle school to high school, touched by it. I have two, two nephews, exactly like that. People who are basically uh, like my, my, one of my nephews was approved uh, to, to university of Chicago. I think it was mm. for a summer program thing. And he's like about to graduate high, uh, high school. He is approved into that program. He's been, it's accepted, but now it's virtual. Like, like, right. You know, you know what happens to all those uh, schools, the infrastructure of academics, uh, yeah. where, when, when we find out size of companies, size of companies, I needed to have a building of X square footage in order to house everybody. The idea of, of telecommuting is, it was a nice little, you know, thing that we kind of toyed with. Now we just found out the proof of concept that we can actually operate the whole frigging company remotely. So why do I need that 30,000 square foot, uh, office space anymore? In fact, will my employees actually even accept being employed to where they have to report to an office every day? Or do they want to be negotiate their benefits to where they're basically working out of the home for three days? You and I have been, have been, you know, digital nomads forever. I, you know, you, yeah. you, you, because of the nature of your job and having to travel a lot, me, because I basically, you know, once I left corporate America, I was like, I don't care if you're doing this thing in your robe, whether it's a spa robe or otherwise, as long as we deliver on when we need to deliver. So sure. that now has become... A reality for everybody. Yeah. 
you know? Yeah. Uh, and I, I think there's a lot of um, good in that. You know, I'm an internal optimist. Sometimes it's obnoxious how I'm always an optimist. But I think there's a lot of good in that because as much as we need information and we need to better ourselves right now, whether yeah. it be in design or whether it be from a business perspective or personal. Right. And that means we need to share more information than we ever have before. My God, this has propelled us to share information, have it spread rapidly than we ever have been able before. Um, we're able to touch and communicate more rapidly than we've ever been able before. This is my fourth uh, uh, talk this week, such as this, because people are hungry for it, which mm -hmm. is great. Mm -hmm. And I know that's going on everywhere. Um, but, and, and then, you know, I heard my 13 year old say, mom, excuse me, I have a meeting. And he logged onto Zoom himself and went on to Zoom. And nine-year-olds are doing that. Mm -hmm. Eight-year-olds are doing that. They would have never have been there in this place before. Um, I, when I shot that video, my son shot it on his camera. And he's 16 and edited it himself. So cool. There's going to be so much cool stuff that happens. And I do think more information will come out than we never had before. I love these digital platforms. I know we, I want human contact. I mean, we, you and I, we're people people. We, and yeah. our, mostly everybody we know is in our network. Um, but there's been a real efficiency to this. And there has been a, a way where we can talk. You know, I, you, I think I took 65 flights last year. I've been able to talk and touch and stay connected with more people this way. And, right. and, <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. I've, 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 I've co-hosted, like I co-hosted a cigar night and we got another one coming up with a gentleman, right? Because you know, he needed sort of the technical support and he's a friend of mine. I will tell you, my experience was that the people that were engaged, and these are people that I've seen in real life in similar situations more, multiple times, the level of connection or the depth of the connection, the quality of the connection was so much more because when in real life, those same people would congregate into their little clicks. We've done it at spy events ourselves. Yeah. You're going to get into those little clicks and you're kind of off in your tangent. When you were on the zoom call and there was probably about 20 people, yeah. everybody was absolutely no pretense and, and show. It was, it was backyard, front porch, didn't matter. They had a, they had a, you know, a crystal Baccarat glass, or they had something for, sorry, it didn't really matter. They were drinking whatever they wanted to drink. They were smoking whatever they wanted to smoke. And there was a whole bunch of different things, smoking going on. And basically they were just kind of hanging out, but it allowed everybody, like you, you were focused, you were in the call, you were in the event. I've seen birthday parties, surprise birthday parties, you know, and, and so, so the depth of connection was because everything else has been stripped away. Uh, in most cases, I have been very pleasantly surprised. Um, the thing that kind of is almost tongue in cheek, cheek ironic is how fast we responded. Yeah. Like, like, like if it takes us this quickly to deal with something and get it done, why does it, why did it new, used to take us so much longer before? Yeah. Because yeah. the whole world shifted gears in about two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks. Everybody was like, okay, fine, I'll do this. Yeah. I mean, I mean, to the point where yesterday Google actually made Google Meeting free. Because they're competing with Zoom. They, they, they're losing yeah. they you know, the captive audience with Google. So they basically made it for free. They yeah. made it for free up to 100 people. Yeah. Right? So it's like, it, 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 it is the new reality. I don't think this is, you know, we used to, ju we used to laugh at, at kids that were basically, you know, doing this with Fort, Fortnite or, uh, you know, War, War of Warcraft across a, a, you know, gaming platform, right? We're all, we're all doing it. Um, so what, so in, as we close, what are some things that you're excited about relevant to the industry that you're seeing maybe? I'm really excited that, everybody's taking the time to think and the desire to elevate. I think for a long time, even the spa world, I mean, gosh, we were preaching health and wellness and we were moving at lightning speed. And I'm thankful that we can slow down, think better our businesses, rethink some of the treatments, uh, really become truly knowledgeable and educated and verifiable 
Mm-hmm. I think that's a strong word. Well, and, 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 and but it's it's going to be necessary, Jessica. It's going to be it's going to yeah. be an absolute requirement because, you know, I don't know that it's going to be very far fetched that I'm going to basically require to see a health certificate from yep. my massage therapist. Yep. And that's going to have all kinds of issues of privacy and HIPAA and all this stuff. But I, you know, if somebody's going to lay hands on me, if I'm going to be within the proximity of somebody, especially let's say, excuse me, let's say maybe it's it's winter season, it's flu season, right? Mm-hmm. the expectation before it was like it would be rude if to ask if somebody's like that but now we're talking about the fact that everybody has to be temperature measured before they go into their shift shift yeah so if so so if your employer can actually measure your temperature to make sure that you are safe enough to be in a shift in, in, in a, a shift uh, do i have the right as a consumer to see that does right. the, does the own does the employer want to share that information with me to basically cover themselves from a liability liability perspective where I I have where I was informed. The same as same as having a, a a license as a you know as a barber or a license as a uh, you know makeup artist. You know, like, do I have to post that now? And is it is it every six months? How often do I get tested? I mean, it's it's kind of an interesting reality, and I think a lot of people are just kind of like maybe they're trying to trying to think that no 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 that's too extreme. I don't know that it's extreme. Yeah, and and, and um, there was an attorney this week addressing because I'm not an attorney. Uh, I was raised by one, but I'm, that's why I don't want to be one. You, you play you play one on television. <laughs> um, but there was an attorney this this week on the Florida Spa Association call, and yeah. there was a group think, and they raised a lot of those same questions. And that's what I mean. I'm excited because our community is taking it seriously. We don't have all the answers yet but we're taking it seriously. Um, And also I'm the most excited because yourself, our company, we have had to innovate so quickly and forced, forced ourselves to innovate so quickly. The things that we did in two weeks Mm -hmm. would have taken us two years in the past. Yeah. And, 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 and approvals and, and, and putting it up the chain. And, and, and I mean, that, that was FDA listed product that we launched in two weeks. Yeah. That's unheard of. Shout out to the R and D team and Jeff Riak, our owner and that brilliance FDA listed equipment. So pretty impressive. Um, that's good. There's going to be a lot that's coming out. That's really exciting that are tools and on many different levels. Mm-hmm. Um, So I'm the most excited about that. And I'm the most excited that as we do weave back into hospitality and restaurant space and, you know, uh, spa and travel and, and it will, it's going to take some time. Mm -hmm. I do think I'm more of an optimist. I think people will forget over, might take years, but that's the the nature of human beings though. I mean, I I don't, I don't hold hope that a hundred percent of the people that are acutely aware today will continue to be acutely aware forever. But yeah. what will happen is there will be a certain percentage where something took during this. Yeah. And that's all you can really hope for because that's a building block, then the next building block, then the next building block. If you got if you've got a hundred people that were exposed and ten of, and and let's say, you know, five of them basically really took it to heart and it basically caused a paradigm shift in their way of thinking, one of those five could actually be instrumental in a major shift, a major, major change in an in industry or the other. So I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm, you know, it's okay with the odds. I think, yeah. I, I, I think it is exciting if you want to get behind it from that perspective, uh, like you're saying, because there's genuine um, energy be- behind solving it. And I think, I think as much as it is painful not to have, people take a leadership position, whether it's nationally or whether in a particular industry yeah. and really provide answers. Mm-hmm. The fact that we don't have answers, mm-hmm. you know, in a society where we have become accustomed to be fed, spoon fed everything. The mm-hmm. fact that we do not have answers, some of us will take that on to come up with them. Yeah. And yeah. also say, I don't know when I said, when I don't know versus yeah. trying to pretend that I do have all the answers. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So that's 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 really that's really reassuring, and and I, and I and I'm really excited to see. You. I mean, I think it was a brilliant move to make make that added layer to your business, 
And obviously it has been a godsend during a situation like this. And I don't see it getting smaller. I think it's just going to grow and grow and grow. But then because you have, and I'm going to put this up again, because you have the multiple layers sort of already vertically integrated, it yeah. is, it is, it is totally the reality you expect like spa works spa, you know, Oakwork spa to basically develop something that then transitions into the medical product side of things or in the opposite way. Um, you know, something that comes out of an interaction with a doctor in one situation that then finds itself into a day spa or a resort spa environment, both in terms of a treatment, in terms of, a, you know, equipment development. It is kind of exciting to be in that situation. And um, I really look forward to seeing what else you guys come up with. Thank you so much. I cannot take credit to be very, very clear. There is a whole team of 50 people behind that. They're, they're humble people and they are brilliant. Um, I just get to the privilege to talk about it. <laughs> well, and it, it, it's a great company and anybody who doesn't, who's listening to this is not familiar with Oakworks. The website is right there behind me. Just check out oakworks.com. And uh, no, it, I mean, it is. And, 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 and you, guys, is. you guys continue to evolve uh, in, in, in ways that are not driven by necessity so much as by, you know, an interest in providing a service or a product that has, finds more and more usage and more and more benefit to people. So kudos to you guys and, and, and keep doing the good work that you guys are doing. Thank you, Rod. I really enjoyed today. And you keep doing the work that you're doing. You kicked it off by saying, I don't understand how podcasts are essential but I do. People need this right now. We want to hear it. And you know what? People want it on demand too. They want to be able to access when it's good for them. They want to be able to select the topics that they want. And it's helpful. It's feeding people souls right now. It's calming yeah. nerves. So you're doing great work and it's a hundred percent essential. Even the I government did. gets it. Well, I did. I, I, I have to admit, I had, I had the biggest uh, grin on my face when I basically told my mother, see, I told you I was essential. Even the government says I'm essential. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> he knows uh, it. You, 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 yeah, I know. She grinned back. So uh, um, you be safe, my friend. Thank you. And your, and your kids. And I yeah. will look forward to seeing you in person soon. But let me keep me informed of what's going on. And, uh, you know, I'd love to do more. You know, who knows how long we're going to be doing this. Yeah. Um, but now we've also established this as a platform to get information out. So if there's anything else that you think we need to get out, uh, whether it's to the, uh, you know, the, the general public or to the industry, uh, you are invited and welcome anytime. Appreciate it. I can't wait to see you in person. Likewise. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks.